would have been a two-game series. We would have played yesterday and then today, but yesterday's game was canceled. So this is just the one and only meeting this season between these two teams and the first since all the way back in the early 1980s. We'll jump at center, and it is UC San Diego in white. Santa Barbara is in blue, and the Tritons win the opening possession. Yeah, certainly a burst of confidence with that win against Cal Poly and getting into the starting lineup, Parker Montgomery, who was fantastic off the bench in that second game. And how about what uh, Sidney Brown did in that win on January the 2nd against Cal Poly with 31 points and 14 rebounds and a turnover for the Gauchos on their first possession. And here's Turner. Kick out to Brown. Brown with a short little jumper, missed. And the rebound goes to Doris Jones. She'll get a half dozen of those a game. Doris Jones is someone you've got to watch out for. Had a 29-point game back on the first against Cal State Fullerton. And that was in only three quarters. Opening minute of this game, drive to the bucket and scoring off the window there is Anya Choice. Freshman guard from Cardinal Newman High School up in Santa Rosa has the game's first points. High post to Brown to Cangelosi, and Cangelosi fires away at three, and the Tritons have an early lead, a buck ten into this one. Cangelosi has really improved her three-point shooting this year. Comes into today 57% beyond the arc. Talked about those ten bodies, and in addition to Lucy Young and Isabel Parker opting out, or Isabel Parker opting out earlier, Hannah Beckman, we are told, has now opted out as well, and then that coupled with Julia Makabuhai's likely season-ending injury means only 10 available for Heidi Vanderveer. We'll see if the Tritons can take advantage of that UC Santa Barbara turnover. They've had back-to-back -back possessions in which they've given the ball away. Yeah, the Tritons really are a better defensive squad than UC Santa Barbara, and nice <laughs> move by Turner. Not only a great crossover, but the blow-by in to get the bucket to make it 5-2. to two. You know, I wasn't with you for the Cal Poly win. Taylor was here and brought you to victory in my place. But I was, you know what, what I was so impressed by as a great pass inside and the bucket made there by Lauren Lee. I think it was the fact that the adjustments that Heidi and her staff made from getting beat pretty badly the night before and then turning around and winning by double digits the next day. Well, and it, that was using the strength, which is their defense. They conserved their energy on the offensive end. There's a three by Montgomery that skims off and really put all their energy into defense in that game, and it made a huge difference. Deep three by Anya Choice is no good, and the rebound clear there by Layla Barra Harvey, the redshirt senior from Richmond, California. And let's face it, that's the Tritons' identity. It's defense first. Uh, sloppy with the early turnovers and a breakaway here and a bucket after the steal. Taylor Moore. Their leading rebounder at nine and a half a game, scores almost 15. She's got a bucket to give the Gauchos a one point lead. Yeah, this is her first start of the year, only her fifth game out of Tasmania, Australia. Avara Harvey goes to the rack and draws contact, a foul on the Gauchos. Like the Tritons aggressiveness inside against a smaller UC Santa Barbara team. That might be part of the reason why Mole is getting the start at six foot two, just to give them a little more size. They generally play pretty small and they'll have as many as four three pointers out there offensively. Parker Montgomery quickly to the bench. Brianna Claro seeing her first action at the 647 mark. And Layla Abara Harvey to the free throw line where she misses the first one after the Gaucho foul on Lauren Lee, her first. First team foul of this opening quarter. Tritons are one and one. They haven't played since January the 2nd, and for Santa Barbara, they're two and six. They dropped their first six games of the year and then swept Cal State Fullerton to start the new year. And it looked really good doing it, too. And they've lost every single game in the Thunderdome, which is amazing. They're 0-5 at home, but have two wins, two and one on the road. Another takeaway by the Triton defense, and as Cangelosi went by her defender, she got fouled. And yeah, Doris Jones was a little behind on that pass and fouled on her way by. First on Doris Jones, it's the second team foul. We're tied at six, 6.27 to go here in the opening quarter. 
Claros handles between the circles here. High post to Tyler Turner. Turner drives into the lane. Turner with a left hand gets it to fall. Boy, it just it grasped like it had teeth right onto the cylinder. And uh, the net sucked it right through for a bucket. It's 8-6. And yeah, Tyler Turner's got such good touch around the basket. She Did has, that against a double team. She has half the points, four of the eight so far. That's a terrific drive there by Anya Choice. And the freshman has a couple of more points, so she's got half the Gaucho points. Yeah, Anya Joy Choice can fill it up. You gotta watch out for her as well. We're gonna see Aisha Brown on a substitution here when play is dead. Sydney Brown off the dribble and took an extra step for a turnover. Boy, they're, they're starting to mount those turnovers by both sides. Santa Barbara has three. That right there was the second in the early going for the Tritons as Abara Harvey leaves the floor. And uh, what you don't like are the unforced ones of that nature. They're gonna happen because of good defense, but you don't want to have them unforced. You know what I do like is those uh, quality shooting shirts, by the way. I'm gonna have to get me one yeah. of those. Too bad we can't go down on the field, or in the uh, court, rather. And driving and scoring again is Choice. Boy, she's pretty good in that low post there, getting position on the baseline underneath. She's got six of the 10 for the Gauchos. Yeah, she's been more of the dribble driver than Doris Jones early on. Yeah, we haven't called Jones's name. Here's Turner dribbling through traffic through three defenders, puts it up and gets a great bounce. Half dozen for Turner to tie this game up at 10. Well, we know she's capable of going on runs, scored as many as 32 a couple years ago against Cal State San Marcos. And a block by Sydney Brown. Both Brown and, well, it was Brown and Brown. So what? Loosening up soon. Six for Anya Choice for Santa Barbara. The other two to score, Taylor Mole and Lauren Lee. Santa Barbara to inbound on their own baseline. A quick little jumper is no good. Out of the hands of Doris Jones. She's their leading scorer at 15 points a game. That was her first field goal attempt, and it came halfway through this first quarter. I think that might have been an emphasis in that timeout. Yeah, I like your chances if you're going to hold her to one shot a quarter. They feed the post. Sydney Brown down inside to Aisha Brown. And what did we say going to the break? What can Brown do for you? They had a block on the defensive end. They now have a bucket on this end. Well, I'll tell you what, if you see Santa Barbara doesn't double the post, that's going to be there all day. Two-point advantage for the Tritons here, 4-12 and counting. And passing on the free throw line jumper there was Danae Miller and tried to pass it down low. And the result is the fourth turnover this opening quarter for the Gauchos. Well, the Tritons, uh, good matchup for UC Santa Barbara or against UC Santa Barbara. Remember, uh, they're known for their three-point shooting. Tritons held Cal Poly to just three three-pointers for the entire game yeah. in that, that second game. Had a 23 attempts. I mean, that was remarkable. A turnover for the Tritons. That's going to be their third and an empty possession for UC San Diego. Turnaround just inside the free throw line was no good by Doris Jones. Not sure if she's pressing a little bit here, but a couple of misses and no points for the Gauchos leading score in the early going. Crossover Turner to Cangelosi, who drives, finds a shot and nails it. Wow, they are really shooting the lights out here in the early going. That is six of nine for UC San Diego. That's a blistering pace in the early going. It's really impressive to me how they can come off a pause like this with all the stops and starts and come out so sharp. Better than 65% in the early going. That's sticking with Santa Barbara. 16 to go on the shot clock, 3.11 to go here on the game clock, a 66% clip. And by the way, they're getting really whatever they want in the paint and on the low post. They haven't even had to try and knock down those threes. They've only taken two threes and made one. Well, they've got the size advantage there. They should just keep going there until UC Santa Barbara changes their defense. Here's a drive and through traffic, and it's Anya Choice again. Eight for Anya Choice, who averages only six points a game. Again, she's just a freshman, really carrying the load here in the opening quarter for the Gauchos, who are down two. Turner around the screen, kick to Cangelosi, catch and shoot three is good. It looked good going out of her hands. Well, Cangelosi is on fire now as well. Has made all three of her shots, including a pair of threes. Yeah, lead is five, a drive there off the bench by Bree Anagwum. 
A new glum. A new glum. Sorry, I beg your pardon. We practice that and practice that <laughs> beforehand. It's the way it works. Yep. A new glum. Here's Cangelosi. And Cangelosi down to the low post, over the top, and grabbing it's the freshman Anisha Brown through a couple of the defenders and scored. I don't know how she got that ball to Aisha Brown, who was being double teamed, but a nice pass. Remember I told you when we signed off of the men's game against Irvine that when you watch men's action at Santa Barbara, you're going to get two better announcers than us two bums. So I was right. <laughs> Here's a drive down to the low post. Count it. It will go. And the bucket made by Taylor Mole. She's a junior from Australia and a Colorado State transfer. Well, both of these teams uh, doing well in the paint, not relying on the three-point shot. I think we have, when we start seeing both defenses adjust and pack that paint, then we'll see the outside shots come. First free throw of the game for the Gauchos. It comes with 1.49 to go in the first quarter. And Mole completes the three-point play, and it is a four-point advantage for UC San Diego. Sydney Brown, high post, Anisha Brown. Angelosi to the corner to Claros. Claros around the pick by Anisha Brown. Doesn't find a shot. Back to Brown. 10 to shoot. Cangelosi, another catch and shoot three. This one off. Great offensive rebound by Anisha Brown. Second chance opportunity again by Turner. And she scores it. Wow. Tyler Turner at five foot five averages almost five rebounds a game. It's amazing to me how she can get such great position. Eight for Turner now, eight for Cangelosi. They've got 16 to the 21. The lead is a half dozen for the Triton women. Anugwa. That's going to go for a two. Two or did they give her a three? I think they only gave her a two on that. 21 to 18. So a three-point advantage. And Taylor, uh, Turner misses, rather. And here's the outlet, and the outlet goes ahead. A new Guam, and then a foul right in front of the Triton bench. And they did give a new Guam a three. A three, on okay. That one, yeah. Beg your pardon. So 21 to 18, and our first look at Kendall Ellenbeck off of Heidi Vanderveer's bench here in the early going. 36.8 to play. Well, the word is out on Sydney Brown, and UC Santa Barbara has done a good job of denying her here in this first quarter. Only two shots, and she's missed them both. Yep, Danae Miller is another big scorer mm -hmm. who's got the ball now, guarded by Turner. A goose egg for her in this opening quarter. She moves right, drives against Turner, who's a really good defender. Nothing there. Choice. Choice now drives. Choice puts it up with the right hand and scores it. Just ahead of the shot clock expiring. That's a heartbreaker. Yep. Good defense to the very end. Choice has 10 in the opening quarter. Two to go on the clock. Here's a three by Claros. Tried to bank it in, and that's how the first quarter ends. I think a very productive first quarter is of a positive test for Santa Barbara. They just had a bye in the schedule and a quick whistle as the shot clock did not start as we resume because the game clock's at 9.59, the shot clock's still at 30. For the Tritons in that first half, 56% shooting from the floor. Santa Barbara was actually much better at 64%. Both teams with their fair share of turnovers, and the Tritons at one point had a seven-point lead with uh, 2.11 to go in the first. They led it 19-12, to but a nice little run by the Gauchos who are wearing blue to end at that first quarter. Makes it a one point game as we head to the second quarter. Well, a big reason for the good shooting percentages were shots right at the rim in that first quarter. Here's Alyssa Marin wearing number 24, backing into the lane, meets two defenders. And on the drive, a block from behind by Ellenback. Well, that was a great recovery because Anugwam had her beat and she came from behind, otherwise that's an easy layup. Yep, a blow by, and then Ellen Beck did a nice job knocking it out of bounds. Gauchos get it, but they have eight to shoot. And they'll get it in quickly to their leading scorer, Doris Jones, who misses again. Well, Jones has got some spring in that jump too, doesn't she? She can hang up there a little bit longer than most. And there's a takeaway. That's the fourth turnover for the Tritons, so Tritons uh, are even with 
the Gauchos. And on the run out, Taylor Mole with a bucket. 22-21, Gauchos in front. The biggest lead for the Gauchos has been two at 10 to eight. Here's Ellen Beck. Sydney Brown. We'll get our first look at Emerson Herman when play is dead. And nothing there for UC San Diego. And a chance now to go up by three on the drive. That is Doris Jones missing again. Still held scoreless. Their top two scorers, Jones and Miller, who averaged together almost 28 points a game, have been held scoreless through the first, well, 10 and a half, 11 and a half minutes to start. Not sure how long that's going to go on for. Claros misses the three. Well, the Tritons offense right now is a little off with Tyler Turner on the bench. Anugwam tries the pass inside to a streaking teammate and can't hit Marin. And shot up and good. 23-22 as Claros is on the board. Yeah, nice mid-range there. Inside of eight minutes to go here in quarter number two. This is Miller. Miller out to Marin. Marin puts it on the floor. The elbow right, fires it up and makes it. That's just a track meet here in the first quarter plus. That's the first points of the game for Marin. Back out in front go the Gauchos at 24 to 23. Inside it goes to Brown from Ellen back. Gets the shot up, misses. Rebounded by the Gauchos. Marin down the floor. Marin kicks it out. Jones looking for her first points. Jones puts it on the floor, tries to blow past Cangelosi. They make an extra pass to the corner. Open for three is a new glum. And a foul underneath. And they got Alyssa Marin pushing off there, trying to get around for that rebound. It'll be Triton basketball. Tyler Turner back in now. It'd be interesting to see if she can pick up where she left off. She had eight points in that first quarter on four or five. First foul of the game on Marin. That'll be the first team foul in the second quarter for the Gauchos. Almost a minute has gone by. You see Santa Barbara in front by a point. Turner back in. Cangelosi was red hot in that opening quarter, looking for more hard off the window. And missed. Good with that look, though. Cangelosi had eight first quarter points. Left open for a three is Choice, and Choice has 13 of the 27 for the Gauchos, who now lead it by four. And again, Choice averages only a half dozen a game. Here's the first touch by Herman. Parker Montgomery back in there, and a foul on... Marin, that's going to be her second quickly as Cangelosi tried to get up top between the circles. Well, let me tell you something about Anya Choice, uh, just a freshman, and at Cardinal Newman High School up in Santa Rosa, had a 43-point game her senior year in the North Coast section semifinals, 34 of their 39 points in the second half, so Ooh. she can fill it up. Yeah. Cardinal Newman's always a great program, whether it's girls or boys, high school basketball or football, even baseball. They do a great job up there. Not a very big school, but quite mighty. Montgomery launches the three and hits it. Welcome to the party, Parker Montgomery, who's been averaging in double figures. Yeah, she was a key factor in that win against Cal Poly. She was four of eight from three-point range in that game. She has her first points of the game on the tray. It's back to a one-point lead for UCSB. Choice. Out to Jones, and Jones ran right into Cangelosi, and a foul on Emily Cangelosi. That'll be her first, team's first here in the second quarter. She's doing a good job, though, of har harassing Jones and making her work hard to find shots. See, not a lot of space. No, I mean, definitely the, the defense really ratchets up for UC San Diego when Turner gets back on the floor. Elbow left shot is good. It just kissed the rim and bounced right in for Lauren Lee, who's a junior guard from Illinois, averaging almost five points a game. Nice little shooter's touch there. Yep, and a drive by Turner, and Turner draws contact. She puts the shot up and 
will get two after the foul there by Anya Choice. I really like her aggressiveness, very decisive to the rim and is gonna force them to either come up with a block or foul her. That should be the second on Anya Choice. Turner a much better free throw shooter than her three of six so far this year would indicate. Schmaze makes the first, it's 29-27. Senior who started her career, by the way, in the Big West. A lot of people forget about that at Long Beach State before going to Division II Humboldt State, then back to UC San Diego last year when they were Division II, and now back to Division I for this year. I wouldn't say wrap up her career, because she can come back, everybody's getting the year back. That three bounces off the rim. That was taken by Doris Jones, who continues to struggle here from the field. There's a foul, and it's gonna go on the Gauchos, Lauren Lee. That'll be the second on Lee. Triton's doing a fantastic job again on the defensive boards, and overall, they are being out-rebounded 11 to eight, but on the defensive boards, that's key. That means you limit the Gauchos to just one shot on their trip down the floor. Lee leaves with the two personals, and Bree Anugwam will replace her on the floor. Inside of five minutes to go, on the next dead ball, we'll have our media timeout. Turner drives in, and Turner scores it. 12 for Tyler Turner here, and the Tritons grab back the lead at 30 to 29. I guess they're gonna be pretty scrappy this year in the Big West, huh? No, I think so. I, I think both uh, the women and the men have shown that they're gonna be able to hold their own. Oh, great shot fake, and a foul from behind on Ellenbeck, but just a terrific shot fake there by Anugwam. And that'll bring us to the media timeout when we come back. A new one will be at the first. We've had nine lead changes in the early going. And one of the big keys here, you know, both teams are shooting lights out better than 50%. But as we look at this box score, UC Santa Barbara's top two leading scores are 0 for 6 from the floor. Anya Choice has picked up the load and put it on her shoulders with uh, 13 points. We'll see how long that can keep going. But Bree... Anugwam is at the free throw line here, taking two shots, and she winds up hitting one of two, and we're even at 30. Anya Choice has already reached her career high as a freshman with 13 points. Kick out to Cangelosi, hot in the first quarter, and in the second quarter sticks her first bucket. She joins Turner in double figures. She has 11, and a three-point advantage for the Tritons. Well, I would rather see Julia Makabuhai out on the court, but she is their best cheerleader right now over there on the bench. Yep. Knee injury will keep her out for the foreseeable future. Again, only 10 healthy bodies for the Triton women. Catch and shoot three is good by Anugum. Boy, where would they be without Anugum and Choice right now? Yeah, they'd be in trouble. But the Tritons in a similar way with the scoring of Emily Cangelosi. Seven off the bench for Anugum. Good penetration leads to an open three by Montgomery, and she hits it. That's back-to-back -back threes for the Triton women, and they have a three-point advantage, 36-33. They've made good on five of nine threes here in the early going. That shot is no good. Again, struggling is Danae Miller. Here's Montgomery, that kicked off the back of the rim and goes to Miller, trying to start the break and transition back the other way. Well, the defense played her like prove it, and yep. she almost did. Anuguam, nope, rebounded by Brown. Brown has yet to make a shot, and that would be Sydney Brown coming off that 31.14 rebound appearance. Good screen high. Angelosi has it back in front of the Santa Barbara bench. Crossover dribble, pull up 16 footer, no good. Rebounded by Doris Jones. Coming up on two and a half to go, a little extra kick, and that is Doris Jones drawing the contact. And Doris Jones now has a chance to get her first points of the game, the leading score for the Gauchos at the free throw line right here with 2.33 to go in the second quarter. Uh, it's a, Emily Cangelosi is doing a fantastic job on her, holding Jones to now 0 for 5 as she goes to the line. And one of the team co-captains really sets the tone for this team with her tough physical play. 
They are 70% as a team from the free throw line. And here's Jones and still a goose egg on the scoreboard for the redshirt senior from Oakland, California. Started her career at Houston and then transferred to Diablo Valley College. And now it's Santa Barbara to finish things up. Knocks down the shot. 36-30 for her first points of the game. Again, she averages 15 points, six rebounds. Good pass inside, and Montgomery scores the bucket. Claros with a great assist. That was fantastic vision, them both being on the same page. A true freshman on the cutter in Parker Montgomery finishing that off. Miller, good pass inside, trying to cut there was Jones, but even better defense by Turner. Knocking it out of bounds. Let's see who touched it last. Looks like it was Turner that touched it last. Let's revisit that last play, partner. Brianna Claros just with the skip pass down to Parker Montgomery, perfectly fed, and she finished it off. Eight for Montgomery, who, by the way, is a freshman from Porter Ranch near CSUN. And she was in double figures last time. That shot from just inside the free throw line, no good by Doris Jones, who continues to look for her first field goal. Turner over the top inside to Anisha Brown. Shook a defender, tried to get the second chance opportunity and got fouled in the process of getting that offensive rebound. Well, when the Tritons are going the way they want to, these transition buckets are part of what makes them so dangerous. Now they had issues with that against Cal Poly, so they sort of changed that to just run a half court offense. Good to see them try and pick that up here against a smaller UC Santa Barbara squad. So here's Anisha Brown, the freshman from Centennial High School in Las Vegas, sticking the first free throw. 39-34 for the Tritons. Aisha Brown, a uh, McDonald's All-American nominee uh, last year out of Centennial. Great little get as UCSD and many others try and mine that uh, Las Vegas market for good talent. They got some solid high schools there. Touch inside by Doris Jones, kicks it back out. And we've got a foul on an illegal screen. That's going to go against Santa Barbara, so it'll be a turnover. I think they wound up getting Doris Jones. I think they did too. She was a moving screen. She never set herself. And she's got to be frustrated with a goose with a one point here yep. in the first half. 0 for 6 for Jones from the floor. And Miller's 0 for 2. So their top leading scorers have not made a field goal yet. And that's why they're down 6. And will they go down eight? No. That would have been the largest deficit for the Gauchos. And Jones lost the handle on it. Here is Turner. Turner for the lay-in and got blocked from behind. But right there to clean it up is Anisha Brown for the bucket. Yeah, you can see Doris Jones visibly frustrated now as she came back down the floor. Tritons are in her head a little bit. How about this? The largest lead of the game for the Triton women at eight inside of a minute to go before halftime. This is something else. Could they win back-to-back -back games against Central Coast teams? We'll see. An Ingwam to the rack. Missed it. Offensive rebound coming up short on the shot was Mole. But, hey, if you don't succeed first, try, try again and get the bucket. Now she did a great job just keeping that ball alive. Has a, about a two-inch advantage on Sydney Brown down there in the paint. And quietly nine for Mole, who averages 14.8, nine and a half boards. Gonna go to the half with the lead here, though. Yep, here's Turner, under 10 seconds to go. Trying to make it an eight point lead again. And the step back jumper is good. And that will end the first half. What a first half for the UC San Diego women. On pause since January the 5th. Haven't played since they beat Cal Poly in this building on January the 2nd. In this game, in fact, Sydney Brown 0 for 3 from the field in this first half, and yet the Tritons still with the eight point advantage. On the other ledger for Santa Barbara, two of their top three scores, Miller and Jones, a combined 0 for 8 from the field, and the only points that Jones has, and again, she's their leading scorer, 
Right there, wearing number 10, coming in at um, 15 points a game. She only has one point. It came late in the second quarter at the free throw line. Well, similar to Sydney Brown, you go out and have a 29-point game. Teams are going to pay attention to you. She did that on January 1st against Cal State Santa Barbara. She's such a dynamic player. She was a, a first-team All-State Northern California Player of the Year at Diablo Valley College. So Tritons still have their work cut out for them, shutting her down. Tritons with the opening possession here and a travel by Brown. Let's talk turnovers and in that first half, only four for UC San Diego, very indicative of the Division II era. Meantime, seven for Santa Barbara. Well, remember those four turnovers were pretty early in the game too, so they just stopped turning the ball over in the latter half. There's the floater in the first points of the game for Doris Jones. She was 0 for 6 shooting in the first half. Gets close, gets a little floater to go, and has her first made field goal of the game. Yeah, set that up with the screen and roll. Lauren Lee was almost like a lead blocker in football there. Montgomery on the screen and roll, and a foul as Ibarra Harvey went up for the rebound, got pushed from behind by Danae Miller. That's the first on Danae Miller, a quick team foul, not even a minute in for Santa Barbara here in the third quarter. Again, this is a Big West game. The handoff goes to Turner, and Turner, who had a fantastic first half, leading the Tritons with 14, misses there. Set up a good look, though. Yep, in transition, trying to make back-to-back -back buckets was Jones, and it's a one-and-done for the Gaucho women. You'll live with that. I'd like to see the Tritons get it to Sydney Brown where she can just see the ball go through the basket. Or Great that. pass, Cangelosi. How about Turner with an assist? Tyla Turner now with four assists. And they've got 10 assists now on 18 made field goals. That was just way too easy on the backdoor cut there for Aunt Cangelosi. Back up to an eight point advantage and an elbow and a foul on Cangelosi. You'll take those every now and then though. Uh, Doris Jones is definitely feeling Emily Cangelosi's presence this afternoon. First team foul on the Tritons. That is the second personal foul against Cangelosi. So Cangelosi will immediately go to the bench for Heidi Vandeveer's team. Again, only 10 able bodies with Hannah Beckman this week opting out, at least during the pause. So you have three opt-outs, Makabuhai hurt. You're down to 10 players, and that, you know you lose a couple of more, and you might be like CSUN where you're like, nope, we're pausing the rest of the year. Another missed shot for Jones, but gets her own offensive board. Now she's got the smaller Tyla Turner on her. Yep. Gives it up on the screen and roll, and nothing there for Lee. Has to back out. Lee got away, possibly with a travel, and scores the bucket. That was a nice effort anyway. That was excellent effort, and actually not bad defense either by Lele Barra harvey Just a good play by Lee. Half dozen for Lauren Lee in what was an eight-point lead, down to six. Brown calls for it. That's Sydney at the high post. That's out of the range of Ibarra harvey Montgomery handoff to Turner. Gets the screen from Ibarra harvey Back out Montgomery from the free throw line. Good. How about Parker Montgomery? Good six, she had eight first half points. Now she's got 11. Well, and that's why she's in the starting lineup now because of that ability to give him another scorer on the floor. Choice draws two defenders, but open at the free throw line. Extended there was Lee, and she can't knock down the shot. Yeah, they'll take that. 15 feet away from the basket. They've adjusted Parker's total, it's now 10. That's a great pass inside of Barra Harvey over two defenders, and there's Turner. No, Turner, the Energizer Bunny. She is. Gets back possession. My goodness. She's so much fun to talk to, you know, back in the, back in the days before COVID when we got to do a post-game interview. What an absolute sweetheart. And what a great play to keep this alive. Now there's three to shoot, and for three, it's short. Brown tried to save it from going out of bounds, but it doesn't matter. Didn't hit iron on the shot, so it's a shot clock violation. Yeah, for those uh, that don't know, watching in Santa Barbara, uh, Tyler Turner has a twin sister that plays at Humboldt State. You got yeah. to talk to her after facing her sister for the first time. They had always played together, and you asked her if she enjoyed it, and she said, no, I didn't right. enjoy chasing her all over the place. She got a taste of what it's like to defend her. Yep. 
We have some good little family battles last year in the Division II era. The Turners uh, won a state championship, did the sisters at Cajon when their high school career actually started at Modern Day. Too long of a drive from uh, San Bernardino into Santa Ana every day. Too many steps, turnover. Turner looks like she might have just got whacked on the lip or something. She keeps looking at putting her hand on her lips as if maybe she bit her lip or bit her tongue. She's tough, though. Tell you who else is tough. Ibarra Harvey is playing some great defense. Yep. Turner, high post to Barra Harvey. One on one with her defender. It's a little bit out of her range. Tries on the backdoor cut for Turner, and you just forced it there for a turnover. And a reach in by Montgomery as Miller was streaking toward the bucket. Looked like uh, Parker, or excuse me, Ibarra Harvey was telling Montgomery, hey, I had her. You didn't need to do that. That's the first foul right here on Montgomery was 10 points. See Montgomery just trying to stop the fast break. And in fact, Ibarra Harvey was there, but that pass was going to go to Taylor Mole for an easy bucket. So it turns out to be a decent foul. See, that's the way you got to defend LeBron James. Stop the dribble right there. You might not need to do it here. Here's Choice. Terrific first half. Gets deep into the post. Great, great spin move and won't get it to go. Sydney Brown with a rebound. Well, Brown's still doing that. That's her fifth rebound. Choice, six of nine now from the floor, 13 points to lead the Gauchos. The only one in double figures on the Gaucho side. Three in double figures for the Tritons, Turner, Cangelosi, and Montgomery. Here's Aisha Brown holding it up. Inside of 10 to shoot, Sydney Brown drives left into traffic, back out, and Isha Brown straight away three, no. Ball is loose, picked up by the Gauchos, and here they come in transition. Danae Miller kicks it back out. Choice will take a deep three and will miss. Rebounded, though, greatly by Jones, who sticks the second chance opportunity. Boy, she saw the opportunity and got right back up in the air, didn't waste any time to convert that easy layup. Santa Barbara playing tough. They are down six right now at 48-42. Tritons need a bucket. Montgomery inside, Aisha Brown one-on-one -on, -one on her defender, misses, tries to get the offensive rebound, and there's a foul. Feel a little bit of a momentum change happening here in favor of the Gauchos. Foul is on Anisha Brown. That's going to be her second as we go to the break. Yep, Uncle Mo is back on the side now of the Gauchos, and we'll see what adjustments the Tritons make coming out of this time. For the Triton women led by eight at the break. They lead by six here. They've been outscored 6-4 in the third quarter to start. We're only a little over five minutes in, but of concern, the shooting percentage, I mean, both teams are over 50% in that first half, but the Tritons have come out and only made two of their first nine shots here in this third quarter. So the lead is six. Santa Barbara can cut it down to four or perhaps in half with a three. Santa Barbara's made three of nine threes in this game. Coming up on 10 to shoot. Lee gets it in the corner to Doris Jones. Jones drives in, misses in the paint, and it's Aisha Brown that grabs the rebound. Yeah, and that was a good switch on defense by Aisha Brown there to prevent an easy bucket. Aisha Brown gets it on the other end, going against Lauren Lee, finds a shot and just muscles it up. And Aisha Brown, Aisha the freshman Brown. from Vegas with a big bucket. Like the confidence that she played there down on the block. Aisha Brown now has 10 points. So that's four Tritons in double figures. And again, they only have 10 able-bodied players on the roster. Here's Choice, big strong first half, dribbles into traffic and with a laser beam right off the window over two defenders. Choice has been something else, 15 to lead the Gauchos, still their only player in double figures and she comes in averaging a half dozen. Turner the crossover dribble through traffic and is fouled. Boy, I thought that one was gonna go in for a three point play. Well, two things on that play, protecting the ball from the swipe by Jones and then again when she got into the paint, holding it with two hands so that if they swipe at it, they're gonna foul her and that's exactly what happened. So Turner's gonna get a chance to go to the free throw line here today where she's a perfect two for two. She was top five in the CCAA last year at just under 80% from the line, good free throw shooter. Lauren Lee, the foul, she goes back to the bench of Bonnie Hendrickson in Santa Barbara with the three personals. 
And Turner makes it a seven-point game at 51-44. Steve, I want to get this in real quick. Don't forget the men uh, play in a little less than an hour from now at UC Santa Barbara. You can watch that on ESPN3. Back to an eight-point advantage, matching the halftime advantage for the Tritons and matching the biggest of the game. Marin dribbling, crossover, goes to the hold against Brown and draws the foul on Aisha Brown. That came with 12 to go on the shot clock, 3.03 to go here in the third. Those were a couple of huge free throws by Tyler Turner to push it back to an eight point advantage and a good veteran move there by Marin, who's a true freshman, but something just to settle things down now and get back to the line herself. That's the third on Aisha Brown, so she has to go to the Triton bench. And here's two shots coming up for Alyssa Marin. She's averaging 7.8 points per game, but in Big West play, averaging 10 points a game. So you talked about, you know, how strong a player she is and just a freshman from Camarillo, which is right down the 101 from Santa Barbara but stepping up her game in conference. They are two and six overall. And of those eight games, four of them are Big West games. So they're two and two in the Big West. Of course, Long Beach State women came in. They started the day with a, uh, or at least a week with a six and oh record in conference play. Doris Jones with the kick ball there. Seven point lead with 2.51 to go here in this third quarter. You know, I'm impressed with Sydney Brown not trying to force things. No points after a 31-point game's got to be frustrating, but she's playing good team basketball. Tritons and Gaucho sort of treading water, if you will, here in this third quarter with the Gauchos only outscoring the Tritons 9-8. Crossover by Turner to the hole and can't finish. Ball is loose. Turner tries to keep it from going out of bounds, but saves it right to the Gauchos, and Choice has it. Nice effort by Turner. She's done a lot of good work on that baseline there. No question. Blew right by Jones. Just couldn't finish. Marin the high screen. Choice. Thinking about the three over Parker Montgomery. Now two defenders. Goes to the hole and is fouled. Well, there's a lot going on for Parker Montgomery there. Did not want to leave Taylor Mole open, so kind of hedging between the two. And a nice job uh, creating the foul there by Anya Choice. That goes on Montgomery. Yep, that's the second on Montgomery. She goes to the bench. Cangelosi comes back in. I think the Gauchos are doing a much better job now attacking the basket here in this second half. And Choice makes the first. That's 16 for Choice. And, of course, you know what happens then is they start getting more consistent driving to the basket. That's going to open up three-point opportunities. Both free throws made, 2.10 to go. Tritons come in second in the Big West. Now it's a small sample size, but they've only played two Big West games, both against Cal Poly, but they're second in the conference in scoring offense at 71 a game, and it looks like how they're going right now, they're gonna get to that. Will it be enough to win here today? Foul on choice, that's gonna be her second. Well, the scary thing is UC Santa Barbara came in averaging 10.3 three-pointers a game, which is 10th in the nation, and have only made three here. So you know at any moment they could start getting hot there. Yeah, they've only taken one three-pointer here in the second half. Well off the mark there was Turner. Turner's now 6 for 11 shooting with 16 points. And a great reverse up and under by Doris Jones, who's having a much better second half. Jones had one point in the first half, didn't make a single field goal in six attempts, and now she's got seven in the second half, or six of her seven in the second half, and three made field goals. Claros pulls the trigger from three, and a foul underneath. Sydney Brown reaching around Taylor Mole there. That's just her first. But UC Santa Barbara has got something going now. They've cut this down to three. And Sydney Brown still with a goose egg on the scoreboard. And because of the bonus, we're going to have shots here in the third quarter on the other end on the team foul. So to do the honors will be Taylor Mole, the Colorado State transfer. She had nine first half points. 
And then now she's in double figures. That's her first points of the second half. And she was a great player in Australia, won a gold medal in 2015 at the uh, Oceana Championships. All of a sudden, you look at the scoreboard and the Tritons eight point lead is down to one here. They've been outscored 14 to eight here in this uh, third quarter of play. Here's Turner through traffic and turns it over. Now a chance for UC Santa Barbara to take their first lead since the second quarter and a foul. And Turner is slow to get up. And she seemed to tweak something in one of her legs on their previous offensive drive. She's tough though, she'll play through it all. I mean, it's usually not a Triton game if you don't see her flying across the floor at some point during the game. So here we go. At the free throw line here is Doris Jones trying to give UC Santa Barbara their first lead since the 5-12 mark in the second quarter. We're tied now with 52. And there it is. They've come back from all the way down eight. It took them a little bit to do so. Almost a quarter and a half, but they've got the lead as Claros brings it in on the front court. Sydney Brown back to Claros. Inside of a minute to go here in this third quarter. Claros, kick out, Cangelosi, catch and shoot three. She was making them in the first half, but is slowed and a carryover by Jones and a turnover. Well, that's a big break for the Tritons. I tell you, the uh, decision by Bonnie Henriksen to start Taylor Mole for the first time this year against Sydney Brown has been huge. That has been a difficult matchup for Brown, who gives a couple of inches to her. And, the Tritons have had issues even just getting her the ball at times. Yeah, this third quarter has been quite forgettable for the Tritons. They've been outscored by nine and need a bucket. Here's Turner, and Turner misses the chippy. Got it back and somehow got fouled. On your choice. That'll be her third. But uh, the Energizer Bunny doing whatever she can to kickstart her team here in the third quarter. It looked like she was even fouled there by Doris Jones, no call there, but how about boxing out Anya Choice on her own shot and drawing the foul? Turner, a perfect four for four from the free throw line this afternoon. The Tritons are seven of eight. To tie this thing back up with 30 seconds to go and she makes it at 17 now for Tyler Turner, who came in averaging 10 points per game, but again, only through two games. This is the Tritons' third game of the year as we play here on January the 16th. She missed, and they're going to say last touch by the Tritons, so the Gauchos will get it even at 53 with 27 seconds to go. Yeah, I agree with Heidi Vandeveer. Hold on a second. I think not only was it not last touch by the Tritons, but I think you could pick two Gaucho players that it went off of, and she might get them to talk this one over. See if they go for nope. a official's review. And it's, I don't think it's going to be Grant. Let's see. We have, we can look and see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, was, that was off of two Gauchos. That should have been Triton Ball. And you can tell the two officials down to the left of where we are had a chance to see it on the big screen. So break for the Gauchos here. Let's see if the Tritons can lock them down on defense. So no harm, no foul, if you will. Here's Jones. Jones drives, and Jones had it blocked by Sydney Brown, and count it! Oh, oh wow. grabbing the loose ball was Mole, and a disastrous end to this third quarter for the Tritons. Boy, just a great play by Sydney Brown initially, and then an even better one by Taylor Mole to finish that play off on the loose ball. 13 for Mole, the lead is two, and a chance to take at least a three-point lead into the fourth quarter. She completes the three-point play, 56-53. The Tritons have one more chance. Turner, Turner needs to launch. Turner couldn't get it off in time. Just a tremendous quarter for Santa Barbara. They outscore the Tritons by double figures and a race in eight-point halftime. Shooting team can also get it done in the paint, outscoring the Tritons by 10, 32 to 22. A lot of that damage in the third quarter done by uh, uh, Doris Jones and yep. Taylor Mole. Jones had eight of her nine in that third quarter. 
She was 0 for 6 in the first half shooting. Jones handles here. Triton shot 20%, 3 of 15 in that third quarter. And they had some good looks. Over the top on the screen and roll, empty possession. Here comes Montgomery streaking down the floor, leaving it for Turner, who struggled. She had just three points, missed some chippies in that third quarter. Claro steps in for a three, misses, and rebounded by Anuglum. That's three for 16 to start this second half for the Tritons, and uh, they're fortunate that Jones couldn't knock down the three there. It could have been more disastrous. Montgomery for the tie. Montgomery can't stick it. And another empty possession. Three of 17 to start the second half. Obviously not good. Mira Schulman, where's number 21? Had it a moment ago. Here's Mole, who had four points in that third quarter. And Miller is yet to score, tries to get the assist, and inside Mole is fouled. Before we went to the break, Cangelosi picked up her fourth personal. We'll keep her eye on that. Again, we only have 10 able bodies. A good help defense there, but uh, drawing the foul, Parker Montgomery looked like a lot of ball there, but she'll get called for the personal. That's her third. Team foul number one, and here's Mole since it was a shooting foul. Gauchos are 11 of 14 at the free throw line. So on the road on a Saturday afternoon, they've managed to get to the free throw line now 15 times as Mole gets point number 15. Leading score is Anya Choice with 17 for Santa Barbara. Both free throws are good, and the lead is five for the Gauchos. How about the Tritons with four players in double figures, and Sydney Brown's not one of them. She's 0 for 3 from the field. What a job they've done on her. And there's an offensive foul on the Gauchos. It looked like it was on Jones. Nope, they're going to saddle Megan Anderson. That really 30? Did I read that right? Yeah, that was on Ibarra Harvey for the Tritons. Check our, that our out. number yeah. 30, yeah. Wrong number 30, the offensive foul on the uh, the Tritons. And so just complicating things. You're missing shots, and then offensive fouls lead to turnovers. Five-point lead, the biggest for Santa Barbara. Miller forces it up and still pulling it over in this one, 0 for 3 officially. And again, she averages 12.6 points per game, their third leading scorer behind the likes of Jones and Mole coming in. Turner, the up and under, draws a foul and gets a chance to pull within three here at the free throw line. And Turner has a knack for that when the team's in trouble. Nice little hesitation there. And then when she goes, able to draw the foul with Anugwam on her backside. Foul on Anugwam, that'll be her first. Sending Turner to the free throw line where she's been six times. She's five of six. She missed her last free throw. And now has missed back-to-back -back free throws. And when she missed that last one, that was that one that was disastrous near the end of the third quarter, right? The two Gauchos knocked out of bounds, but the officials gave the Gauchos possession. And they later scored the N1 play as Turner uncharacteristically misses both of them. Here's Jones. Puts it on the floor, kicks it out. Stepping in now for a two is a Neguam. No, rebounded by Abara Harvey. They got a chance, but they need to, to make some buckets here. Again, they're three for 17 to start the second half. And an 0 for in the fourth quarter. Montgomery, and she's fouled by Marin. The Gauchos did a really good job getting back on defense there, and Montgomery with a quick first step on the baseline. Let's see how she can fare at the free throw line. Only nine second half points for oh, the Tritons. We've seen this all afternoon with the Tritons dribble drive and their defenders trailing behind them. Now it's just a matter of finishing those off and making something of them. Parker Montgomery sticks both free throws. A dozen for Montgomery, who's hobbling down the floor now. Hope she'll be okay. Still a one possession game, despite all the misery here and 
Only 11 second half points, for goodness sakes, for the Tritons. What was an eight point advantage, now they're down three. And now I'm not so sure they're gonna get to those 71 points that's our second best scoring average in the conference. That was Choice looking for points 18, 19, and 20, and she misses the three. Turner gets the screen high, and it's gonna be another illegal screen by Abara Harvey. That's her second here of this quarter. I didn't get a good look at that. I wasn't sure if maybe Turner started a step too early before Ibarra Harvey could set the screen. Yeah, that's what happened. So when you're setting the screen, you've got to wait for your screener to set before you dribble, or you're going to get called for the illegal screen. That's what happened there. Two fouls on Ibarra Harvey, both being illegal screens in this quarter. Here's Miller out of Long Beach. California, Long Beach Poly, a drive and Mole scores the bucket. Too easy for Taylor Mole. 18 for Mole, the leading score now for the Gauchos. She averages almost 15 points a game. And here's Montgomery. Turner has it on the left wing. Driving, great little pass to leave it there for Abara Harvey. And while she couldn't score, she absorbs some contact. And will try and get at the free throw line here. Tyler Turner has such a feel for where her defenders are coming there. As soon as she felt the double team come, a great bounce pass to Ibarra Harvey, who's going to go to the line for two. Doris Jones gets called for her second personal. And Ibarra Harvey sticks the first. So despite how things are going, I mean, the Tritons are right there. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a couple of defensive stops, and you could be right back in the lead. Coming off of a pause. Oh, what a great takeaway there by Turner for the offensive rebound. And they get a chance now at another possession to pull within two, maybe one. Barra Harvey to Turner. Going to set the screen now. Doesn't move this time. Turner kick out Montgomery. The three, no good. And ball is loose. Might we have our first tie up? Yeah, we do. We saw so many tie-ups last year, and they move up from Division Two to One, and you rarely see any tie-ups anymore. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we'd see that arrow going back and forth all game. Tritons have possession here, and so they get a break, even though they've been outscored uh, four to three in this fourth quarter, yet to make a field goal in the fourth quarter, and still hanging around at a two-possession game. Claros to trigger the inbound. Turner gets open and grabs it on the wing right. And a reach in foul. She was about to blow right past Aniguam, and Aniguam called for her second. And she actually did a good job going over the top of that screen, but then on the reach in gets called. Yep, and she's like, I know it, I know it. Nice to see when the players actually acknowledge they did it. That doesn't happen very no. often. But going on the top of that screen is better than going below it. And Turner drives in, fighting to get it back. And again, another terrific second chance opportunity. She gets fouled again. Yeah, Doris Jones upset. She thought she had the tie up, but uh, give Tyler Turner credit. You play to the whistle. If they don't blow the whistle for a tie up, then you keep going. You take a look at the end of this play here. Dial 858 534 3186. Tritons still have not made a field goal here in the fourth quarter. Just three made field goals all second half. Still plenty of time to go. They're only down four. And here's Turner at the free throw line. She's missed her last three at the charity stripe and make it four straight here. Goodness. I wonder if she can hear me from up here without the fans here. I know she could hear me last year one time. She didn't like what I had to say. <laughs> But, you know, Turner earning these at the stripe as she makes one of two because there's six offensive rebounds, and she's been fouled seven times. So now it's a one-point game, I mean a one-possession game, rather. She has 18. Tritons are down three. Big possession here for the Gauchos as they try and get to three and two in the conference. Choice came up short on the spin move. She got her own offensive rebound, and we got a whistle. And a foul and over the back, and it's going to be on the Gauchos. So before there was some real contact underneath that made it look like it was a Triton foul. Yeah, it did. I think that was uh, Tyler Turner drawing the foul. She's going to get to go right back to the line here. 
Yeah, because it's team foul number five against Santa Barbara, so they'll be in the bonus. And we'll see officially who they give it to. If it's on Jones, it's going to be her fourth. No, Lauren Lee, so that's going to be her fourth personal. Well, she's not yeah. even in the picture yeah. there. Well, I think that's the, the whole thing. I, I think I heard the official say the foul happened prior to that pass going down there. So, nonetheless, I don't think going to give it to Choice, I guess. Uh, Anya Choice. Well, that the makes more sense. Yeah. That's, that's what I would have guessed. All right. Well, I heard Lee on the public address announcer, but it looks like it's Choice in her fourth. Anyway, a chance still for free throws by Parker Montgomery here. And she'll have a chance to pull the Tritons within one. And Montgomery's having a, a sensational game with 13 points. And it's a one-point game despite the Tritons not making a field goal in the fourth quarter yet. Cangelosi comes back in with four personals. Montgomery sits. Tritons have made only three field goals in 19 attempts in the second half and are within one of Santa Barbara. And wow, they're going to keep Cangelosi on Doris Jones. And here's a whistle and another foul. I'm a little surprised that Cangelosi goes on Jones, who's such a slasher to the basket. That puts you in danger of fouling out. They get Claros here for the foul, the reach in, or a body of, of some sort. It's a, you might call it a ticky tack foul, but. It might. It is team foul number four. And here's Jones, Jones. Turner, Turner slipped that screen there. Marin, Marin puts it on the floor. Marin steps back for a deep two, no good. Tried to get her own offensive rebound on a collision between Brown and Marin. Yeah, this is not for the faint of heart here in the fourth quarter. It is a lot of beating and banging down low. <laughs> and we have not had much scoring in the second half. I mean, in this fourth quarter, as Harvey gets called for the foul, 4-3, Santa Barbara has led in scoring, and the Gauchos aren't much better. They only made one they made one field goal in the fourth quarter. So here's Marin. So it's going to be one of these grinded out sort of games here. You're going to win it at the free throw line and with defensive possessions going forward. And you see how many times both teams have been to the free throw line. This will be the 39th between the two teams. Marin sticks them both. A little breathing room here. But still only a one possession game. It's 62-59. The Tritons just have not been able to really get their offensive sets to go very cleanly. It's been Tyler Turner doing a lot of that. Oh, Turner and unable to handle the pass. Streaking in was Ibarra Harvey. A costly turnover because it's going to lead to a run out and a bucket on the other end by Jones and timeout Vandeveer. Yeah, that's a four-point four turnaround right there. My goodness, it looked like you were going to go in and make it a one-point game. Instead, the turnover... And Santa Barbara building a five-point advantage. 4.44 to go here in the fourth. Back for the in this second half for them. They're 0 for 3 from the floor in the fourth quarter. But even more concerning, they've missed five free throws here in the fourth quarter. And that's right now the difference in the game. Yeah, and this is uh, annually one of the better free throw shooting teams around. They shot 86% from the line a year ago. And they should be better than that. And into Cangelosi, and she lost the handle on it for a turnover. My goodness. I think they'd only committed one turnover in the second half, and they get bit again here. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Yeah, that's their 10th now, and uh, this is a huge possession for UC Santa Barbara. They could make this a three-possession game with four minutes to go. Got to grind it out. The difference in this one was a 20 to nine third quarter by Santa Barbara. They were down eight with the Gauchos at half and roared back with that big third quarter. The Tritons really have been their own worst enemy. Missing a lot of shots. Might go the whole quarter without a field goal make. Choice who's playing with four fouls out to Jones. Four to shoot. Jones a deep two is no good. And there's life. Sidney Brown has Nothing but rebounds in this game. No points, six rebounds. Turner, 16-footer, no good. Another miss. They're 0 for 4 from the floor here in the third. And in transition, 
That's going to be knocked out of bounds, sticking with the Gauchos here. You know, the Tritons just don't really have any sort of rhythm on offense. It's been a lot of Tyler Turner driving and getting to the free throw line, but not much else. Jones calling for it. Jones has it. Plenty of time to shoot. They'll take off as much time as they can. This is Miller without any points, who's a double-figure scorer. Jones against Turner. Dribbled behind her back and found a jump shot just left of the lane for a bucket, which might be the backbreaker right here. And just floating to her right and nailed it. That might have done it. A uh, seven-point advantage. Here's Brown. Big three is good. Her first points of the night. Give the Tritons a chance. It's their first field goal of the fourth quarter, and it comes with a little over three minutes to go. Boy, did they ever need that, and did she ever need that? It's not going to get shut out here tonight. Yeah, she's just coming off a 31-point game. That's her first points of this game. Here's Jones. Big miss there, big rebound. Tritons have a chance to cut it to two. Maybe have an opportunity to cut it to one. And to a strike, <laughs> to Harvey who scores. A cutting Harvey, and there's a Gaucho player that is down. Is Danae Miller yep. slow to get up. Terrific pass. It's a one possession game. It's 64, 66-64 uh, and a timeout called by the Gaucho. So you get the three. Like this, and really her demeanor has never changed. She hasn't tried to force anything to try and get on the board. Playing good team basketball. You mentioned the seven rebounds that she's had. Uh, she's played good hard defense. And then when they really needed her, hits that three pointer. So the Tritons have scored five quickies. They've made their last two field goals and they've got a puncher's chance here with two and a half to go. Here's Miller, still scoreless. Miller on the dribble against Claros to Choice, who's had a great game with 17 points. She drives in and is fouled. Oh boy, Cangelosi can't believe it. That's gonna be the fifth on Emily. She'll be disqualified in this game. Cangelosi logs 25 minutes, scores 13 points. So they're gonna call her with the body there on Anya Choice, and what that means now is you lose the redshirt junior and bring in the true freshman, Parker Montgomery, to try and handle the load. So Cangelosi disqualified. Choice to the free throw line. And she leaves one open there. I will tell you this about Parker Montgomery. She has not shown uh, any evidence of being intimidated by being in this position. Choice makes one of two. She has 18. The lead is three. It's still a one possession game. Gauchos with the lead. Screen high by Ibarra. Brown. Brown. And an offensive foul. Wave off the bucket. Boy, what a great job by Lauren Lee to get into the lane there. Sydney Brown just didn't see her. And so the foul on Sydney Brown, her second. That's and it's a good call by the official. Who's that guy at San Diego State that used to take him all the charges? Tim uh, Tim Shelton? Yeah, Tim yeah. Shelton is coaching at uh, Fresno State. That was a Tim Shelton moment right there. Gauchos don't have to be in a hurry. They got a three-point lead, pull up two off the front of the rim. No good by Jones. Yeah, that was not a smart offensive no. possession at all. Here comes Turner. Turner drives. Turner scores, and it's a one-point game. 67-66. All right, got to get a stop on defense now. Well, wouldn't this be something to pull out back-to-back -back Big West games to win your second and third ever Division I games? It could happen. And driving and scoring the bucket. And a tremendous bucket it is there, Taylor Mole. Yeah, she's been clutch all night, and uh, the Tritons just did not get in front of her and stop that dribble. She took it straight to the bucket. Timeout, Tritons. Mole has 18. It's 69 66. This is a thing of beauty through three defenders. Uh, you see Sydney Brown and Lele Barra Harvey both a step late there, and uh, Mole. Well, she's a great player. She's done well on both sides of the floor. Tritons here don't need a three with a minute 19. If you can get a quick basket, I think you take it. Obviously, if you get an open look on the three or if you get double teamed on a dribble drive, then kick it out. But not a must have to get a three pointer here. 
1.19 to go. Both teams are in the bonus. So on any foul, we're going to have free throws. Tritons have three timeouts left. The Gauchos have one left. Claros, bounce pass to an open Turner who scores it. Back to a one point game. Had it in the right hands. Brianna Claros, one of the best at finding the open teammate. What a well drawn up play coming out of the timeout. And, uh, 16 seconds to go. I thought for a moment there, Gauchos were going to call a timeout. That was Bonnie Henriksen yeah. saying, slow down. Yep, here's Miller. What a time it would be for her first made field goal of the game. Miller crossover, Miller off the window, no. And save from going out of bounds right to Mole again, who gets a big bucket. And give credit to Lauren Lee for that rebound and getting it to Taylor Mole. Looked for a moment like Lele Ibarra Harvey was going to control it, but when she didn't, Lauren Lee was there to clean it up. And Heidi not happy about what had transpired right there. Goes and talks to the official. And leading since the 82 season. And again, offensively, you don't have to force a three here. You get a two and then foul on the inbound and make them make both free throws. As a team, the Tritons shoot 37% from three, but they're going to go for the two, and it's Brown. And you don't, have, Brown. you don't yep. have to foul here. And a timeout, Santa Barbara. They're going to use their final one. It's back to a one-point game. Man, this has been something, this finish here. The Tritons, who for the first, what, almost full seven minutes, six and a half minutes of the fourth quarter, did not make a single field goal, can't miss here in the latter part of the game. They're now five of nine in the fourth. Just a great job by Aisha Brown there, just facing up on Lauren Lee and blowing by her. I Love the reaction of the bench, yeah. too. I think if my math is right, the Tritons have made five Miller. She's missed all five of her shots. Tritons led by Turner's 22 on 8 of 16 shooting. And here we go, 33 and a half to go. Gauchos are out of timeouts. Tritons have two left. And the difference in the, and a steal. Oh my goodness, a chance to take the lead. Turner drives, misses, Brown the rebound, and a foul. Oh my goodness. They can take the lead with a clock stopped here with 26 seconds to go. Wow, Tyla Turner using her quickness to get into the passing lane and just take that away. Oh, Turner with her second steal of the game. And here's Brown, the Tritons, 66% at the free throw line. Make one, we're tied, make them both. Play some defense, you can get out of here with back-to-back -back wins. Sydney Brown coming into today had made all seven, now make it all eight of her free throws. <laughs> Even 71 apiece. Again, Gaucho's out of timeouts. Missed off the front of the rim, trying to get the rebound, and Brown got it, and then called the quick timeout because they had two left. How about that? Boy, that was the key, too, that you can't call timeout unless you have control for her to out-hustle on the miss. Wow. Now, you don't have to give Santa Barbara the ball back at all. You can play for the final shot and the win. If you don't get it, you go to overtime for the first time this year in what is just your third game. It'll be your first overtime game ever in Division I play. Look at Sydney Brown here on her own miss beats Mold to the basket and gets control of the basketball and calls timeout. Whoa, man, would this be remarkable? A program that's been on pause since the 5th of January, hasn't had a lot of time to practice, won their first Division I game in their second ever Division I game, January 2nd against Cal Poly, and you got a chance to pull this one out. Well, I think you try to get the ball in Tyler Turner's hands here and then a little screen and roll action with her and Brown or either of the Browns. Here we go. The shot clock is off. Tritons have one timeout left. Turner picked up by Miller. And Turner drives in. Lost it out of bounds to Claros. Claros to Turner. Turner puts it up and scores it. Oh! -ho! Now, Santa Barbara has no timeouts left. However, the officials whistle the game dead. 
Oh, Turner, 73-71, 4.2 to go. Yeah, that was a timeout called by Heidi Vandeveer to get her defense set with 4.2 left. That play looked like a disaster from the outgo, but then Brianna Claros <laughs> somehow gets the loose ball, and Tyler Turner says, I got this. And her bench had a reminder, you got to get back on defense here. I'm not sure I would have called that timeout. And if you can't get it to Jones, Danae Miller. This is remarkable. All right. Here, 4.2 to go, so they can bring it into the front court. Here's Miller into the front court. Miller now to the corner. The three to win it by choice is Whoa. no good. And the Tritons have won it. Oh, you got to be kidding me. They could.